You did mention Garrett, so let's move on to 3A sectional 26. Garrett at Tippecanoe Valley, West Noble at Fairfield. Uh, Tippecanoe Valley, I know we don't, we don't get out there every Friday right. night. We don't see them a lot. But they always rack up a ton of wins mm -hmm. during the regular season, whether they've been in the TRC or in their new conference now. Yeah. Um, you know, they handled Woodland uh, with relative ease. Yeah. Uh, it was a closer ball game, and then they tore it open in the second yeah, half. Um, what do you see as being the key between Garrett and Tippecanoe Valley? I think it's, it's commanding the line of scrimmage, I think, for Garrett, is what they've been able to do all the way through the season is really established their offensive and defensive fronts to, to, to really be able to – to open up holes and, and then get stops. I think for Tippecanoe Valley, it's a, it's a bigger challenge for Garrett, particularly on the road. But I just feel like this Garrett team is, is battle-tested and seasoned to where they're ready for the challenge with Tippecanoe Valley. They're not a very pass-heavy team. I think that's the team that I would look at as maybe the challenge for Garrett at some point down the line. Mm -hmm. But uh, Tippecanoe Valley isn't that. I think it, it, the matchup favors Garrett. But as we saw like last week, if you're at home – it's a good team. We saw what happened with, with Heritage going down to Delta is you don't know. Yeah, that Heritage Delta game. Again, you know, we talked about it quite a bit that Delta wasn't as bad as that record because right. of the teams they played. Wasn't as bad as yeah. a 4-5 record would indicate. And, man, they, they, yeah, they, they put it on them. And I, that, that, again, it wasn't the outcome like the Dwenger game. It wasn't the outcome. It was the gap that right. surprises you. Well, and do you, is it as simple as looking at, okay, the Hoosier Heritage Conference is a lot of bigger schools and Delta's in there as a smaller 3A. New Pal, Greenfield Central. Right, and then you look at Heritage as a bigger school and a smaller conference in the ACAC. I mean, it's not always that simple, but what is it that simple with that matchup is we just mm -hmm. kind of looked at it and said, Delta took their lumps in the regular season. It pays off in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, West Noble Fairfield. Uh, this was a 31-0 West Noble win in week five. I, I don't know if there's two te I don't know if there's a team more so than Fairfield that if you took the first five games and then you took the last <laughs> five games and said these are the exact same teams where you'd yeah. be like no that's absolutely not true. Now that makes more sense when you think of, about that it's it's Corey Stoner's first year right. and there was a, certainly a learning process in the first half of the season and, and they've won three in a row coming right. into this one. But West Noble is a load. Seth Pruitt is a yeah, load. Yes, uh, and they have. You know, bottles, and they have a number of other guys that can do things. Uh, I think this will be a closer game, but I, I don't know that Fairfield yeah. can overcome all the horsepower that, that uh, West Noble has in this one. We've seen Fairfield be able to put up the fair share of points in some games, and then other times the offense just doesn't show up, similar to what you said with we can't figure them out. I mean, yeah. they're still, I think, the only team that have beaten Culver Academy this year, which is, just makes no sense. Uh, but I think for Fairfield, I don't think they get shut out in this game. But it's going to be very tough if you can't contain Seth Pruitt in that running game. Uh, it's going to be tough. Can Fairfield outscore them? That may be their only shot. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about 3A sectional 28. Yeah. Lures beat Norwell. Jay County beat Belmont. So those two will play. Uh, when you take a look at Bishop Lures, they put up 42 points last I game. <laughs> you have to feel pretty – I know Norwell had a rough season, yeah. and they got hit with some uh, – you know, with the, with the graft injury, major injury to perhaps their best yeah. player uh, late in the season. So um, a little bit outmanned in this one. But you have to feel really good if you're the Bishop Lures yes. offensive staff to yes. put up 42 points. You do, and especially with the way Jace White played at quarterback. It's been him and Devin Patterson back and forth, a couple juniors throughout the season. You know, was it a decision to go just Jace White? Was you know, Devin Patterson unavailable for whatever reason? I'm not sure. But the fact of the matter is, he threw a couple touchdown passes. He, he completed about 70% of his passes, didn't turn the ball over. And that's really what you need for Bishop Lures and see how far they can go. You can't rely on Darrier Williams and the running backs to carry the load throughout the playoffs. That's just not going to be valuable. or You're not going to be able to do that all the way through. They need some semblance of a vertical threat. They got that last week against Norwell. You can say, okay, quality of opponent, and it raises a little bit this week on the road. But at the same time, if they found it, then – it's pretty much open for Bishop Lewis to see how far they can get. Yeah. Uh, I, there's such a wild card to me at this oh, yeah. point because we just don't know the level of 3A, what's it going to take to advance. And, and, again, you know, we hadn't seen them be as successful offensively for the course of the season. To me, they're the biggest wild card team in our area right, right now where I'm like, oh, they can make a pretty deep run. Or it could be, you know, a couple more weeks and that's it. Right. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And usually 3A is like, oh, we got one team that may – I mean, you look at it now, you got Garrett, you got West Noble, yeah. you got Bishop Lures. I mean, all of a sudden 3A is, hey, could we get a team out of the north in 3A?